Hello students, welcome to the lecture on types of exports and exporters and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the registration of exporters, define the application for IEC number, discuss India's share of export, describe major export from India, discuss plastic industry. Let's begin with the concept of types of exports and exporters. An exporter without any commercial contract is completely exposed to foreign exchange risk that arises due to the probability of an adverse change in exchange rates. Therefore, it becomes important for the exporter to gain some knowledge about the foreign exchange rates, quoting of exchange rates and various factors determining the exchange rates. Export from India requires special document depending upon the type of product and destination to be exported. Export documents not only give details about the product and its destination port but are also used for the purpose of taxation and quality control inception certification. In India, custom clearance is a complex and time-taking procedure that every export faces in his export business. Physical control is still the basic of custom clearance in India where each consignment is manually examined in order to impose various types of export duties. High import tariffs and multiplicity of exemptions and export promotion schemes also contribute in complicating the documentation and procedure. So, a proper knowledge of the custom rules and regulation becomes important for the exporter. Export measure the amount of goods or services that domestic producer provide to foreign consumer by. It is a good that is sent to another country for sale. In the past, export of commercial quantities of goods normally required involvement of the custom authorities in both the country of export and the country of import. More recently, with the advent of small trades over the internet such as through Amazon and eBay, exports have largely bypassed the involvement of customs in many countries due to the low individual values of these trades. Nonetheless, these small exports are still subject to legal restriction applied by the country of export. Thank you for watching this video. For more details, let us now discuss the registration of exporters. Prior to 1997, it was necessary for every first time exporter to obtain IEC number from Reserve Bank of India RBI before engaging in any kind of export operation. But now, this job is being done by DGFT. Registration with Director General of Foreign Trade DGFT. For every first-time exporter, it is necessary to get registered with the DGFT Director General of Foreign Trade, Ministry of Commerce, Government of India. DGFT provides exporter a unique IEC number. IEC number is a 10-digit code required for the purpose of export as well as import. No exporter is allowed to export his goods abroad without IEC number. However, if the goods are exported to Nepal or to Myanmar through Indo-Myanmar border or to China through Gunji, 
Namgaya, Skip, Kila or Nathula ports, then it is not necessary to obtain IEC number provided the CIF value of a single consignment does not exceed Indian amount of INR 25,000. IEC number. IEC code is unique 10 digit code issued by DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade Ministry of Commerce and Government of India to Indian companies. IEC code is Importer Exporter Code. To import or export in India, IEC code is mandatory. No person or entity shall make any import or export without IEC code number. Your host for today, and we will look at importer exporter IEC, that is import export code. Uh, what is IEC? An IEC is a type of a license which you need to get registered for whenever you are doing any commercial activity cross border. If you are just getting money from your friends and family, you don't need an IEC or even if you are getting an investment from somebody in foreign, you don't need an IEC. You need an IEC whenever you are doing business with foreign uh, uh, individual or companies. So this is only uh, whenever you do business, not for investments and all. So that is what IEC is. So why it is needed uh, in order to effectively uh, monitor and control the various inflows and outflows of foreign exchange. The government has uh, introduced this uh, license so that they can effectively monitor. So, who should go for IEC? IEC is applicable to anybody who is doing uh, uh, a commercial activity. So, for example, you can do it as an individual. You can just be a freelancer and offering services to somebody in US, UK or any other place. Then also you need an IEC. Many times people say, think that I am just doing it as an individual. Do I really need it? Yes, you need it. You can take an IEC registration right on your name. Say for example, Naveen Kumar. I can take an IEC registration on Naveen Kumar itself with my savings account. You don't need to have a current account for that. But if you are taking an IEC registration in any other name, say for example, a business name, then you need a current account. So, uh, anybody who is doing a commercial activity, you should take an IEC. Recently, there was a huge hue and cry with, uh, for the paper transactions. So that was a move RBI uh, did, so as to track a lot of money that was coming in and going out. So typically, whenever you are making any imports, that is, you are making a payment outside India, those has to be properly tracked for various taxes issues and stuff, and a proper pro process needs to be followed. So that's why they banned all transactions from PayPal where you can make a payment outside India. For receiving payments, they have made it small, small categories. So PayPal also has been insisting on providing an IEC number. But since the amount has reduced a very small thing, they have just now uh, looking at the PAN number where the tracking can be done. So who is going to ask you for an IEC? Whenever you receive any foreign payments, your banker will give you a call, sir, this payment has come and they will ask to pr produce an import-export license uh, to uh, credit that amount to, to your account. So that's the importance of IEC. Quickly, whenever you are doing any commercial transactions outside India, you need an IEC, whether you are importing or just an exporting of both, you need this. It is not needed whenever you are trying to raise money or trying to bring any investment or loan from a friend, relative, investor, company. This is not needed. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the application for IEC number. An application for grant of IEC number shall be made by the registered or head office of the applicant and applied to the nearest regional authority of Directorate General Foreign Trade, the registered office in case of company and head office in case of others, falls in the IAT near yard form, ANF2A, and shall be accompanied by documents prescribed therein. Application for IEC number can be submitted to the nearest regional authority of DGFT. While submitting an application form for IEC number, an applicant is required to submit his PAN account number. Only one IEC is issued against a single PAN number. Apart from PAN number, an applicant is also required to submit his current bank account number and banker certificate. An amount of Rs 1000 is required to submit with the application fee. This amount can be submitted in the form of a demand draft or payment through EFT, electronic fund transfer by nominated buying by DGFT. Points need to be taken care of while applying for IEC number. 
Covering letter on company's letterhead for issue of new IEC code number, two copies of the application in prescribed format, IAT Niryat Form A and F 2A must be submitted to regional joint DGFD office. Each individual page of the application has to be signed by the applicant. Part 1 and Part 4 has to be filled in by all applicants in case of application submitted electronically. No hard copies of Part 1 may be submitted. However, in cases where applications are submitted, otherwise the hard copy of Part 1 has to be submitted. Only relevant portion of Part 2 need to be filled in. Rupees 250 bank received in duplicate or demand draft EFT details evidencing payment of application fee in terms of certificate from the banker or the applicant firm in the format given in self-certified copy of PAN issuing letter or PAN permanent account number card issued by the income tax authority two copies of passport size photographs of the applicant duty attested by the banker of the applicant self-addresses and blog with rupees 25 postal stamp for delivery of IEC certificate by registered post or chalan or DD of rupees 100 or for speed post India's share of export let us now know the meaning of India's share of export. Export in India increased to 1,652.02 INR billion in August of 2013 from 1,544.47 INR billion in July of 2013. Exports in India are reported by the Directorate General of Commerce. India exports averaged 253.15 INR billion from 1978 until 2013 reaching an all-time high of 1,672.52 INR billion in March of 2013 and a record low of 3.75 INR billion in May of 1978. India's main exports are engineering goods 19% of total exports, gems and jewellery 15%, chemicals 13%, agriculture products 9% and textile 9%. India is also one of Asia's largest refined product exporters with petroleum accounting for annual 18% of total exports. India's main export partners are United Arab Emirates, 12% of total exports and United States, 11%. Uh, this include China, Singapore, Hong Kong and Netherlands. In 2007, 8, 9, 10 and 11, the country's share in the total global exports stood at 1.07%, 1.21%, 1.31%, 1.48%, 1.32%, 1.33%, 1.33%, 1.33%. The long-term vision of the government is to make India a major player in world trade and assume a role of leadership in international trade organization commensurate with India's growing importance, the minister said. Exports have always played an important role in the economic development of most countries. This is evident even in Indian case from the continuous upward movement of percentage share of merchandise export in the overall gross domestic product GDP of India from 13.9% in 2009 to 10 to 16.0% in 2010 to 11 and 17.7% .7 in 2011 to 12. As per the WTO trade statistic, India's share in the total global merchandise exports has been measured at 1.48% during 2010, 1.66% during 2011 and 1.60% in 2012. The difference between imports and exports is the measure of trade balance which contributes to current account, balance stability of a country. Macroeconomic growth and stability of a country has a very close correlation with current account balance of that country. Hence, government and policy makers keep a close watch on trade balance and current account balance. An aggressive product promotion strategy for high value items that have a strong manufacturing base is the main focus of the overall growth strategy. The core of the market strategy is to retain presence and market share in traditional markets move up the value chain in providing export products in the developed country markets and open up new vistas both in terms of markets and new products in these new markets. Export have boosted the growth of Indian economy substantially and Indian exports in the current year have earned nearly US dollar 125 billion and is expected to earn US dollar 160 billion for the next fiscal year. The major export products of India include leather, medical appliances, equipments, textiles and so on. Chemical industry Chemical industry is an integral component of the Indian economy which contributes around 7% of the Indian GDP. It touches our lives in several different ways. Whether it is thermoplastic furniture we use or a synthetic garment we wear or a drug we take, we are inextricably associated to it. 
the industry is integral to the development of agriculture and industrial development in India and has key linkages with various other downstream such as automotive, consumer durables, engineering, food processing and more. During 2005 to 6, the industry contributed 17.6% of the manufacturing sector. However, the country continues to be a net importer in 2005 to 6, with exports of US dollar 5.95 billion and imports of US dollar 7.92 billion. History the chemical industry is one of the earliest domestic industries in India, contributing considerably to both the industrial as well as economic growth of the country since it achieved independence in 1947. The industry presently produces around 70,000 commercial products which range from toiletries and cosmetics to plastic and pesticides. The wide and diverse range of products can be broken down into several categories which include inorganic and organic commodity, chemicals, plastic and petrochemicals, drugs and pharmaceuticals, dyes and pigments, pesticides and agrochemicals, fine and specialty chemicals and fertilizers. With primary focus on modernization, the government of India has taken an active role in promoting the growth and development of Indian domestic chemical industry. The Department of Chemicals and Petrochemicals that has been part of the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers since 1991 is responsible for making policy making, planning, development and regulation of the industry. In the private sector, several organizations including the Indian Chemical Manufacturers Association, the Chemicals and Petrochemicals Manufacturers Association and the Pesticide Manufacturers and Formulators Association of India all work with the prime objective of promoting the growth of industry and the export of Indian chemicals. For example, the Indian Chemical Manufacturers Association represents a large number of Indian companies which produce and export a variety of chemicals which have legitimate commercial application but also can be used as precursors and intermediate mediates for production of chemical weapons. Overview Growing at an average rate of 12.5%, the Indian chemical industry offers a wide spectrum of opportunities for the investors both from India and the world. The significant market potential coupled with the existing pool of human resources and the comprehensive variety of resources in the country make it a profitable destination in the new millennium. In the world production of chemicals, Indian industry stands at 12th position pharmaceuticals and bulk drugs. In terms of volume and value, Indian pharmaceutical industry ranks 4th and 13th respectively. In 2004, industry was valued at over $6 billion, which is growing at an annual rate of 8-9%. to The industry can be divided into bulk drug segment and formulation and manufactures about 60,000 finished medicines and around 400 bulk drugs that are used in formulation. Agrochemicals One of the most dynamic pesticide producers in the world. India is the second largest manufacturer of agrochemicals in Asia. Out of 145 pesticides registered in the country, 85 of a technical grade are locally manufactured. The country has established itself as a global sourcing base for generic agrochemicals. Petrochemicals and organic chemicals. The petrochemical sector that primarily comprises polymers, synthetic fibers, fiber intermediates and plastic processing is growing at an annual rate of 14%. At the world level, India stands ninth in terms of polymer consumption and is expected to be the third largest consumer of polymers after USA and China by 2010. To meet the growing domestic requirement, nine global sized ethylene crackers of 700 kT each would need to be set up by 2011 to 12 over and above the present capacity of 2.4 million tons. Dyes. The Indian dye industry is valued at around US dollar 3 billion with exports of about US dollar 1 billion. The per capita consumption is very low, 50 GMS, as compared to average global consumption, 400 GMS. The industry is highly fragmented with 50 players in organized sector and 900 in unorganized sector, 400 GMS. The industry has undergone tremendous over the years, starting as an immediate manufacturing industry to a fully fledged industry with huge export potential. At present, India's share of the dye output globally stands at 5% with a manufacturing capacity of 1,50,000 tons per annum. Specialty chemicals. Specialty chemicals comprise fine chemicals and performance chemicals. The Indian fine chemical industry is in a growth phase with an estimated worth of US dollar 700 million. The industry primarily caters to the pharmaceutical industry. The Indian specialty chemicals industry is valued at an approximated worth of US dollar 3 billion. 
inorganic chemicals characterized by high degree of fragmentation even across of high volume product areas Indian inorganic chemicals industry account for less than 4.5 percent of global market the sector comprises of production of chemicals such as sulfuric acid phosphoric acid titanium dioxide carbon black and chloralkali industry which forms a major part of inorganic sector home furnishing a fast emerging economy in the world of home textile india produces a wide range of products including home furnishing household linen curtain tapestry and yardage meat with several texture and varying thickness the home furnishing industry mainly exports fabrics bed linen table linen toilet and kitchen linen towels cushions curtains pads tapestries and upholstery carpets and floor coverings etc the industry has adopted several measures and techniques to offer premium quality and eco-friendly products to the global industry the home furnishing products can be broadly categorized into five categories which include bedding window dressing bathroom textiles cushions and covers and table linen household penetration levels are high especially in the largest sectors bedding and window dressings while replacement due to wear and tear is not inevitably frequent and increased consumer interest in home interior products has stimulated buying in what is now very much a fashion-led industry the industry also benefits from the growing number of household a trend which is expected to continue at an even faster rate exports with their ethnic intricate carvings weaves pattern themes motives color scheme and workmanship indian home furnishing products are gaining immense popularity among buyers the world across the share of indian exports in home textile is increasing day by day in 2002 to 3 the value of export of cotton handloom fabrics and made ups was rupees 544 crore the value of export of handmade carpet and other floor coverings was of the order of rupees 2590.26 crore and value of export of other home furnishing products was rupees 2633.37 crore future forecast the future prospect for the indent home furnishing industry are bright especially in the post quarter regime the industry is an expansion mode and is expected to benefit from growing demand both in the domestic and global markets indian apparel and textile industry the apparel and textile industry occupies a unique and important place in india one of the earliest industry to come into existence in the country the sector accounts for 14 percent of the total industrial production conduces to about 30 percent of the total export and is the second largest employment creator after agriculture history the history of apparel and textile in India dates back to the use of modern dyes and printing blocks around 3000 BC. The foundation of the India's textile trade with other countries started as early as the second century BC. A horde of block printed and resid dyed fabrics primarily of Gujarati origin discovered in the tombs of Fostad, Egypt are the proof of large scale Indian export of cotton textile to the Egypt in medieval periods. Indian handicrafts and gifts. India is one of the major exporters and supplier of handicrafts and gift products to the world market. The Indian handicraft industry is highly labor intensive and decentralized, being spread all across the country in rural and urban areas. The sector is considered as the second largest employment generating sector after agriculture, with numerous artisans engaged in craft work on a part time basis. History the rich history of India's craft tradition has evolved over the centuries, offering a legacy of Indian culture promising everything beauty, dignity, form, and style. Major export from India The Indian plastic industry has taken great strides. In the last few decades, the industry has grown to the status of a leading sector in the country with a sizable base. The material is gaining notable importance in different spheres of activity, and the per capita consumption is increasing at a fast pace. Continuous advancement and development in polymer technology, processing machineries, expertise and cost-effective manufacturing is fast replacing the typical materials in different segments with plastic. On the basic of value-added share of India's plastic products, industry is about 0.5% of India's GDP. The exports of plastic products also yield about 1% of the country's export. The sector has a large presence of small-scale companies in the industry which account for more than 50% turnover of the industry and provides employment to an estimate of about 0.4 million people in the country. 
Approximately rupees 100 billion are invested in the form of fixed assets in the plastic processing industry. History Indian plastic industry has made significant achievement in the country ever since it made a promising beginning with the start of production of polystyrene in 1957. Exports In the calendar year 2006, the value of a world plastic export was US dollar 375 billion. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Director General of Foreign Trade DGFT provides exporter a unique IEC number. IEC number is a 10-digit code required for the purpose of export as well as import. IEC code is importer-exporter code. To import or export in India, IEC code is mandatory. No person or entity makes any import or export without IEC code number. Export have always played an important role in the economic development of most countries. The chemical industry is one of the earliest domestic industries in India, contributing considerably to both the industrial as well as economic growth of the country since it achieved independence in 1947. The growth of India's agriculture sector during the 50 years of independence remains impressive at 2.7% per annum. The hub of India's jewellery industry is Mumbai that received majority of the country's gold and rough diamond imports. The country ranked first among major livestock holding nation in the world and thus has a rich endowment of raw materials in terms of the cattle population. The Indian handicrafts industry is highly labor intensive and decentralized being spread all across the country in rural and urban areas. Continuous advancement and developments in polymer technology, processing machineries, expertise and cost-effective manufacturing is fast replacing the typical materials in different segments with plastic. 